Once upon a time, in the age of the eternal cylinder, there lived a family of little creatures called the Trebum. Trebum are not the strongest, nor the fastest, and they do not have sharp teeth. They would make easy prey for the terrible force that came to their planet. But Trebum are loyal and resourceful and very, very stubborn. It is with such a Trebum that our story begins. One clever little creature born into a cruel world who would be instrumental in bringing prosperity to its kind. A few moments later... Run! Something inside him said, run! The great crushing thing, the great cylinder, had stopped. Perhaps it was safe here for a little while. How quickly it learned to use its legs and its trunk. Perhaps, the little Trebum thought, they were a gift from the strange voice it heard in its mind. That too was a kind of memory. Just when it was starting to get used to its legs, the food from the jumping creature gave it new ones. With the right substance as a catalyst, a Trebum can transform and adapt to many challenges. The Trebum was drawn to a bright light, or perhaps to the creature next to it. Except for the grass growing on the old one's head, they were very much alike. Surrounded by this light, the Trebum knew things it had not known before. It knew the older Trebum had carried this light for a long, long time. And it knew that now that responsibility had passed to the next generation. Yes, this young Trebum had to carry the light to those great towers in the distance. It could have stayed here to learn many old things. But the cylinder would not allow it. Run, the inner voice said, run. The towers would not stop the cylinder unless they were activated. Quickly, the Trebom had to step on the symbol or the cylinder would not be stopped. The voice inside the Trebum's memories assured it that while the tower stood, the Trebum would be safe. The power of the eternal cylinder was contained for now. This door had been built for Trebum. It gave them hope that in this large and dangerous world, some places had been made for them. Inside the cave, Trebum found a living elder. It had been waiting in this chamber for a long, long time. The elder told them it was happy to see some friends before the cylinder came. It said, you are young, so you never knew the time when our people could shapeshift at will. We Trebum are inheritors of a vast tree of abilities, abilities passed on to all future Trebum. But this power is being taken away. Beware the servants of the cylinder. They will seek to hurt you at every opportunity, and they have the power to rob you of your abilities. But if you persevere, one day you will find a way to protect yourselves from their evil light. 
Farewell, my brave friends. I fear I am too old and tired to join you. May you find a way to prosper in this time of struggles. It was not easy to leave the cave, but the Elder had urged them to go forward. Suddenly, they felt the weight of their many tasks to find their Trebum siblings, to restore the powers their people had lost. And it all seemed a little daunting. But even when they are afraid, Trebum are stubborn. The cylinder resumed its destruction. Nothing could stop it forever. needed to roll to safety to find another tower to protect them quickly. In this strange, eerie temple, the Trebum felt something stir in their memories. There was a great power in this place. Something from the days when even the elders were young. Perhaps it could help them. The Trebum were disoriented for a moment. Something new had entered their memories and they needed to make sense of it. It seemed to be a map. And on this map, a location had been marked. If they understood correctly, there was some manner of serpent, a guardian, a greater being of some kind somehow linked to a safe haven. Could they find refuge there? Their ancestors must have created this map for a reason. What manner of strange beast lurked behind the cylinder? The Trebum were deeply unsettled by this new mystery. But though some part of them was curious, they were certain it would be best not to find out. As their fear faded, the Trebum started feeling weak and tired. With all the excitement and adventure, they'd neglected their most basic needs. And for such small creatures, they do require rather a lot of food. Fortunately, the savannah was rich in flora and fauna, which would satisfy their little bellies without necessarily triggering a mutation. The Trebum felt a great power flowing through this cave, but they were not afraid. The power felt familiar, even friendly. These glowing structures were the work of their ancestors. What the fuck? Was this strange being, half flesh, half metal? The Trebum felt an old, distant horror, as if they remembered their own destruction. Something about this creature was very, very wrong. Trapped on all sides by deep pools of poisonous gas, the Trebum needed to find a way to escape this monstrosity. Perhaps there was a way to use the creature's own weight to lower the bridge? One by one, the yellow light cruelly burned away the Trebum's abilities. The Elder had warned them about the evil light of the Cylinder's servants. Now they knew what kind of creature to avoid. <laughs> Thank you.
Lavender roared with fury. The voice in their memory spoke with great urgency. The Trebum had to be very careful now. The cylinder would lash out at the land, but it would not let them run too far. To survive, they would have to stay in the eye of the storm. As frightening and surprising as this enormous creature was, the Trebum felt a sense of relief to see it descend from the sky. This was the celestial being they'd been told to seek. Perhaps it held an answer to their troubles. Encountering another elder was a happy moment. The Trebum asked how they might survive the cylinder. Perhaps what we need to do is go behind it. I have discovered a mutation that allows us to rise into the sky. If you find any glimmer of hope on the other side, remember me. Farewell. What was this monstrous creature? Was this one of the Cylinder's servants? The ones the Elder had warned them of? Its very form terrified the Trebon. Even the voice on their memory seemed frightened of it. And then, somehow, the Trebon remembered the creature's name. It was called the Mathematician. Even with the ability to float, overcoming the cylinder would have to be done very carefully. What they needed was a geyser that was well positioned, close to the cylinder, when it lay still. Or their plan would never work. They would have to keep looking, and meanwhile, they would try not to think about what sort of monster could kill one of the flying serpents.